Hello and good morning to all joining us via Zoom and our Facebook live stream. Welcome to the Center for Enlightenment's exploration of the spiritual teachings, Jewels from Jane Elizabeth. Each Sunday will be a free-flowing adventure with video teachings by Jane Elizabeth Hart, facilitated by certified Center for Enlightenment teachers. Today's lesson topic, understanding the ingredients of your soul. Ray Brett will be the facilitator for this video lesson. He is a certified teacher for the Center for Enlightenment, and Greg is a longtime student of Jane Hart, has been studying with her for over 30 years. Jane is the author of Spiritual Power Tools, Support for Your Soul, Master Teacher, and Founder of the Center for Enlightenment. Today's course will be live streamed via Facebook. A recording will be sent out with the weekly reflections so you can access it anytime. For those new to this format, your chat icon is located at the bottom of your screen. Just click to view. If you have any technical questions, please reach out to the host or co-host via the chat room. In addition to the Sunday courses, there will be a question and answer discussion on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. A link for these sessions will also be posted in the chat room. If you're in need of prayer support, please contact us at cfenlightenment.org or just type centerforenlightenment.com. We are active on Facebook and Twitter. Come check us out and share your thoughts and experiences. It will also be a great support to like the postings that resonate with you. We also invite you to visit our website at cfenlightenment.org. There you will find additional self-study lessons, talks, videos, or you can search for specific topics to support your expansion in consciousness. So as we all become present, let's just take a deep breath, exhale, and allow ourselves to begin this journey with the prescription for spiritual alignment. Good morning and welcome to this time of nurturing your soul. And this is your time. So let's take it together as we gather our en energy, our consciousness, our intention with the spiritual alignment, the prescription for spiritual alignment. We are aligned with the presence of God within. We are protected by God's love, wisdom, knowledge, and grace. The God consciousness within helps us discover more about who we are. Thank you, God, for the gift of spiritual intuition. Thank you, God, for aligning our conscious subconscious and superconscious mind. And thank you for this time, this time together, this time one with our soul, in our soul, as our soul. Amen. So here we are having a time of nurturing our soul, looking at qualities, the ingredients of the soul, and that's the topic today all the different ingredients of your soul and understanding what makes the you that you are up. What makes up that essence of you? What makes up that you that is evolving through space and time in many lifetimes? What makes you up? <laughs> so here we are, we're gonna talk about these ingredients, these different ingredients of the soul. And this is about the evolution of your soul in two ways. You know, there's a lot of discussion about what is the soul, and it sounds almost contradictory. Sometimes people say the soul is the essence of the soul, beyond space and time, the spiritual soul that is changeless and is beyond time, beyond space, beyond any definition. That, that spiritual essence of you. And then other times people talk about the soul as the soul in evolution, growing from lifetime to lifetime, gaining uh, experiences, gathering impressions, um, learning, growing in the opposites in time, both positive and negative. I remember once Jane was uh, giving a class on healing your soul and a 
minister friend was taken aback by it. And he said, well, how do you heal your soul? Your soul is already perfect. And he was right. And she was right. <laughs> he was right in that the essence of your soul, the soul that was created in the beginning and into which you are evolving and growing in full awareness, that soul is perfect. And these aren't two souls, by the way. These are two aspects of the soul. But what she was talking about was how the soul grows and evolves and learns and changes and heals over time. I'm going to break it down just a little bit more. The transcendent soul, the, the higher self, the Christ consciousness, the, the Buddha nature, the awareness, the Atman, all the same thing. This essential soul is perfect beyond space and time. And it's your fourth dimensional experience of the soul in oneness. Its essence, its nature is oneness. But then it takes a form and it incarnates. And what happens then? Beginning with the very most primitive form, it builds impressions in the opposites because it's a third dimensional expression of soul. That fourth dimensional soul, which is perfect in, in its essence, that Christ consciousness, that awareness of your higher self comes into incarnation and then evolves in the opposites. And that's the soul that moves to the third dimension. So if you understand these two aspects of the soul, that third dimensional soul, its job, if you want to call it a job, is to evolve and grow in its essential understanding of itself and expand and get filled with uh, irradiance, light, until it comes into full realization of itself, which is the fourth dimensional soul. I don't want to get too heady about this, but sometimes it's confusing for people because you talk about the soul. But are you talking about the fourth dimensional perfection or the third dimensional evolution? In its essence, your soul is infinite and it lives in the now. Your fourth dimensional essence of your soul is a now moment experience because there's only oneness in the fourth dimension. There is no time as a dimension you move through in the fourth dimension. But that soul, your soul, entered space and time and has been evolving over decades, centuries, millennia, eons of time. To grasp the journey of your soul is really beyond the intellect's capability. And so in order to bring it down to a level that we can understand, Jane in this video talks about the analogy of a cake. Your soul is a cake. And she talks about how you take all the ingredients of the soul, blend them together, do the, whatever you need to do, and then bake it into the perfected experience, which is the birthday cake. But let's begin with the most essential ingredient, the very first thing, the flour or the water or the uh, baking soda or baking powder or what, you know, the salt, the vanilla, all these, the eggs, all these different ingredients, your soul began gathering impressions in the most simplest form, the absolute most basic form. And each level of your soul's evolution, each stage in your soul's development is a different impression or ingredient that you add to that process. Your soul in the third dimensional evolutionary process is a process. It's not just a thing or an ego. It is a process of unfoldment. And your soul is an amalgamation and blending of all these ingredients through a process, just like when you bake a cake, you got to do it step by step. It takes time. It takes the baking process, but it takes many different stages. And as that process all worked together, it created something that is very different than any one of its parts. How could a birthday cake have anything in common with salt? How could a birthday cake have anything in common with vanilla? So it's not 
it's so much more than the separate ingredients, even the sum of the ingredient ingredients. All these forms, all these ingredients, all these lifetimes you've gone through have all been blended together and baked into that birthday cake that you are in your soul essence. And your soul at the very beginning began to wake up gradually as an expression in God, as God, in potential expressing. And remember, there's that God essence in you, that soul essence, which is your fourth dimensional soul, which is the potential of you. But then there's also that aspect of the soul that begins with the most simple consciousness, the most rudimentary, most basic consciousness, gathering different experiences. And in the video, Jane talks about beginning as gas and minerals and plants and then animals. And each one actually contributed to your identity today, even though you're not consciously aware of it. And I'm going to share a phrase that she says in the video that encapsulates all of this. She said, you are consciousness that takes on different forms and you have evolved through all these systems of consciousness. Systems of consciousness. So the animal consciousness level is a system of consciousness through which you evolved step by step over many millennia and eons of time. And your human consciousness is also a system of consciousness. And you have evolved from the barely conscious, most primitive consciousness, in greater and greater consciousness. And what ha happened every stage and step of the way is you gathered impressions. Let's talk about impressions. What's an impression? Well, people in the East, call it sanskaras. That's a Sanskrit word they use in Hinduism. And I'm only telling you about it, not to confuse you, but you might read about it somewhere. Impressions are, in Western psychology, called thought forms. They are the forms of thought that dwell in your subconscious mind. Remember the analogy of the iceberg, and beneath the surface of the iceberg is nine-tenths subconscious. And that's where your impressions, the thought forms, the sanskaras, all dwell. And so as you build from the most primitive impressions, step by step and stage by stage through all the systems of the plant and animal and mineral, and you build up to the human, you finally reach the culmination of your evolutionary journey, which is the human being. Now, when I read that and I heard that, when I heard Jane talk about that, I was a little uh, confused because I thought if the human consciousness is the culmination of the evolutionary journey, I look around and I say, this doesn't look all that high and lofty. Humanity has got a lot of troubles. And then she explained that Although the human consciousness is the culmination of evolution, it then begins a process of involution. And that involutionary process is to move to the next level of being. And you have experienced, she said, every possible form that led to this human incarnation. And through this human experiences, you gained more impressions, yes, which you put into your subconscious, your iceberg, and more talents and abilities, positive and negative, karma, developing greater and greater intelligence, becoming more and more conscious. But now it's time to move into entirely a new state of consciousness. What are we going to call it? I heard her once say, let's just call it peanut butter. Because she was having fun with the thought that there are so many labels for this next stage of fourth dimensional consciousness, the fulfillment of the soul, the realization, the awareness in full of the whole self. That awakening is enlightenment, is full consciousness. It's super consciousness. It's your God consciousness, your God self. It's your higher self. It's your fully realized soul awareness. 
it's your Buddha nature, your Atman, your there. I, I remember reading a word in uh, Islam that I can't pronounce because there's too many consonants, all kinds of definitions, but it's all about one thing. It's your fourth dimensional awareness. So let's just say it's your next step. It's your next stage in your awareness. And now you're ready to move into that next stage of consciousness and understand it. And she says in the video, even evolve through it as well. But that evolving into it is called involution. So you've been evolving through all these forms to the point where you're ready to turn inward. And that inward journey is the journey to the fourth dimensional soul awareness, waking up, enlightenment, full Christ consciousness. And this lifetime, the lifetime you're in right now, is your best opportunity to make the decision to begin this process. I'm sure you've already begun it if you're on this video, to work in the best interest of your soul and move your consciousness into the God consciousness, that fourth dimensional, fully realized, fully awakened soul. So right now, you've got a lot of consciousness. You've built it up through many forms and systems and levels and layers and lifetimes. And now there's so much more to experience and enjoy as you move into the involution. Jane says, you are infinite consciousness in a finite form, infinite consciousness in a finite body moving into that larger consciousness into which you're capable of growing. And then she talks about all the different ingredients. And I'm not going to go through her analogy because she does it so beautifully. But this is a process of gathering and mixing together these ingredients and then baking it, which means there's time involved in this. There's patience involved in it. Now, me, I'd like to just go down to the store and buy a cake and be done with it. But if you're going to truly bake this cake, which is really your process of soul evolution leading to involution, there's a process of time. And this is your evolutionary process leading to your involutionary process. Now, because you're here watching this video and you haven't turned it off yet, you are a mature soul that has gone through many, many experiences. And now you are ready to move into the ultimate experience that is beyond human form and that is the reality of your infinite self. You've been gathering more and more illumination. This whole process is a process of vibration and energy, gathering more and more light, gathering more and more illumination into your consciousness until you grow in your awareness and become more and more capable of working in the best interest of your soul in involution. So just to review your evolutionary process taught you to take the many steps that have led up to this. And now you're lifting the veils. You're lifting the veils that have been covering up the essential soul, the essence of you, which is already fully there, but you're taking the veils off. This is another analogy, and it may be confusing. I don't want to mix you up any, but we're just having fun here. These are all pictures to describe that which is indescribable. So the veils, as they are lifted, and you reach the final veil, when it is lifted, it reveals your whole self in God, in the infinite, no longer limited, totally illumined, totally awakened. And again, we've moved and grown so much. If we only knew how limited we were in the beginning, how very little awareness we had. But as a human being, we have that much more awareness because we fully develop our intellects. And now, what am I going to do with that awareness? That's the question we're asking ourselves. I've gone through all these experiences in my life. I've done all these things. What am I going to do with it? I've fulfilled some of my desires. I've been disappointed in other ones. I've liked a lot of experiences. I have not liked other ones, but it's all led me to this place to ask myself, what am I going to do with this, with where I'm at right now, with this awareness? 
Well, first you realize that you have the capability of understanding so much more than who you seem to be, who you are today. And in order to understand that whole self, you have to get to know all the ingredients of your soul. In each of us, we have a different expression, but we've all gone through the same basic process. Many lifetimes, you were a warrior, you were a peasant, you were a woman, you were a man, you were religious, you were a harlot, you were, you were everything. We've all done it all. There's nothing that you can imagine that at some level you haven't expressed. And what this has led to is the baking of a cake. Now, each one of us is a different flavor of cake because we've had different impressions and different experiences. And as you move from the finite into the infinite self, you start to get to know the different ingredients that make up the cake that you are. But each one of us is unique. And I know as I've worked with Jane and, and seen her work with her students, that each one is different. And she said to us over and over again, not that we always grasp it, that how you need to work with one soul is different than another soul. This was true for Jane and her spiritual partner, Shireen. In a sense, they were opposites. Jane was a people pleaser, a housewife, uh, very conservative in form, all about um, fashion. And uh, she made herself up and she was a uh, very, um, I don't know, a, kind of a traditional. Whereas Shireen was a probably a bohemian or a hippie before her time, uh, very feminist, very, um, you know, very much different than Jane. And when their souls were becoming more and more awakened, it's almost like they switched so that they could get to know all their potentials. So Jane became the, eventually the leader for the Center for Enlightenment, the teacher, the, and Shireen focused on, although she was an attorney, she focused on raising her children and um, balancing that out. You see, in getting to know your whole self, you have to balance yourself out. And so me, I came into this lifetime, intellect, intellect, intellect. And so what did I have to balance? Heart. I have other friends who were very willful and they had to open up maybe their in intelligence or Jane was very heart oriented and she's been she has developed this intelligence that allowed her to become the teacher that she is. But unless and until you understand who you are and what you're made of, you can never get to know your whole self in God. And there's no even though we hear these stories, Jane said many times, I'm not going to bop you on the forehead and wake you up. And I've heard Eastern teachers say that as well. We hear these stories about it, but it's because that soul had already done the work. They can't, this is just pulling the switch of something that already existed. But for you and for me, if we were bopped on the forehead and came into total illumination without any process of baking the cake and putting the ingredients together, we wouldn't understand our soul. We wouldn't appreciate our soul. All the ingredients must be experienced and understood. And when you get to that certain place in your evolution, and before you can take your next step into your full soul awareness, you've got to get to know what got you to the place that you are. In essence, this is your greater leap into the infinite. And we all have to go through this process, this step-by-step -step process, realizing that there are no bypasses to this experience, to this process of the involution of consciousness. And you will never understand the divine, the infinite, the higher self, until you understood or understand what it took for you to become fully human so that you can take the next leap in consciousness to the spiritual soul consciousness and awareness, which is your true identity to live in the super consciousness of who you truly are. This is your experience in life, or this is what your experience in life has led you to. And now is the time to take a look at your soul, both your soul as it has evolved with all of its ingredients in the process of life, 
and the soul in essence, in potential to which you're awakening. Freeing yourself from your human beingness that was created over those many lifetimes. Unraveling, unraveling all the impressions and thought forms, the sanskaras, the, the different impressions that you gathered in your spiritual iceberg over many lifetimes and understanding your whole self in God. Every master has talked about this experience of evolution. And although they may not use this terminology of turning inward, every mystic has talked about this experience of getting to the point of awakening and awareness. So this week, we're going to have the experience of looking at, getting to know our soul so much better and becoming aware of the many ingredients in the soul. This week, we're going to look at how that process has unfolded. Looking at, although it isn't necessary for everybody to remember their past lives, to remember that you are made up of many different consciousnesses and impressions that led to this place. As your soul, as an infinite consciousness, has evolved through many finite forms. Well, let's lay back and have some fun because Jane is going to talk to us about baking the birthday cake that we are. So let's watch this video together. There. We are going on with the evolution of your soul. Thank you for being a part of my life, and I am a part of your life, even though uh, I'm sitting here in Florida enjoying the beautiful sunshine. I'm also a part of wherever you are, because in God there is no time nor space. Everything is infinite. And since we all agree we're souls evolving, I would like to talk to you a little bit more about the evolution of your soul. A lot of you have texted me and wanted to know more about the soul. And um, I've been thinking about that and thinking about a way that <clears throat> perhaps I can um, explain the evolution of your soul to you a little bit better. And uh, if you'll bear with me, I would like to talk about baking a cake. Um, and this is for you guys too. Um, you all know that when we have our birthday cake, we have our wonderful birthday cake with frosting and flowers and, and happy birthday to us on it. Our soul is a birthday cake, if you will. Now I'm going to explain that a little bit better to you. Say we're going way, way, way back in time. And let's pretend like you're flower. You are just a flower. And I do mean a flower for cake. You're a flower. And you realize and recognize that you're a flower. And um, there's a desire in you for more. So you find yourself a cup of sugar. And you add sugar to your flower. And as you move forward and you evolve more, you decide that your consciousness embraces, let us see, eggs. We're going to put some eggs in this cake. So now we've got flour, we've got sugar, we've got eggs. Now we have to think about what else do we need to make the perfect cake, the perfect soul? Well, we need to have also a liquid to pull it all together. So we're going to put milk in this cake. And we're going to now stir it up and let it all work together. And we realize we need some baking soda. And we need some baking powder. And we need vanilla. And now we're ready to bake our cake. Our soul is evolving and it gathers different types of materials 
to grow from, to exchange the consciousness that we're in. So this is why I'm using the cake, because the cake has a lot of ingredients in it. And you, as a soul, have a lot of ingredients in you that, that has made up what you are. So this cake has all these ingredients to make it what it is. So now we're going back to baking a cake. And now this cake is ready to be put in the oven. It's, we've mixed it up, we've put water, we've put flour, we've put all the ingredients necessary to bake a beautiful cake. Now we're going to put it in the oven, we're going to let it bake. And we're going to take it out of the oven, and here we have this lovely cake. Well, it needs some frosting. So now we have another process to go through. Now we have to go and put sugar and shortening and vanilla, and we're going to make frosting for our cake. Because we've got the, the form, which is the cake, but now we've got to add more things to the cake to give it the perfect deliverance that we want to have for our wonderful birthday cake. So now we have this wonderful frosting that we're putting on our cake, and then we need a few roses. And we can use our frosting and just put some food coloring in there, and now we can put roses on our cake, and we can say, Happy Birthday, Soul. Here we are, the birth perfect birthday cake, celebrating life, celebrating the joy of being alive and the joy of being a presentation of something very beautiful. That's our birthday cake. Now, let, <clears throat> let us go back right now and think about the soul. Our soul evolves as it starts to wake up to itself. It uh, is uh, then in the expression of God. Let me go backwards again and say, when God breathed life into us, we became simple consciousness. Simple, simple. If I can say a thousand simples, that's what I'll say of consciousness. Very, very minute consciousness. Very tiny. But as we evolved, we gathered different experiences. We became gas. We became um, vapor. We became part of the dirt. We became part of the vegetable kingdom. We became part of the animal kingdom. We've taken all these different forms. Thousands and thousands of forms that we've taken through the evolution of, of consciousness. Because it's about consciousness, it's not about human beings, it's about consciousness. And you are consciousness that takes on different forms. Just like when you were a stone, you had the form of a stone. And you were fairly, barely, barely, and I'm going to say it very bigly, barely, barely conscious. And yet, you are conscious. Metal, we become metal. We become all these objects. We, we evolve through all these systems of consciousness until we finally come to that point in our consciousness when we're ready to take on the body of an animal. And we become conscious of that animal that we are and then we gather information, we gather impressions. They are impressions within the soul. As it moves, it gathers impressions of the different forms it's, it's experienced. So it, you have experienced all these different forms until you've come to the form called the human form, the human being form. And now you have gone through many experiences as a human being, gathering understanding, gathering different impressions, different talents and abilities, and developed your 
uh, intelligence. And as you've developed your intelligence, you've become more conscious, more conscious, and more conscious until there comes a time when it's time to move into a new, a brand new state of consciousness. We call it super consciousness, God consciousness, infinite intelligence, name it whatever you want, it's all of, all of the above. And we are at the point where we are ready to come into that state of consciousness, to understand that and evolve through it too. So this is your opportunity this lifetime to work in the best interest of your soul and the best interest of your soul is to move your consciousness to experience more experiences so that you experience the God consciousness, which is an experience. When you are a stone, you experience being a so stone, stone and, and you did, had very little consciousness. Now you have a lot of consciousness, but there's a lot more consciousness to enjoy. Right now you are an infinite consciousness in a finite body. I'll say that again. Your infinite consciousness in a finite body trying to move into the larger consciousness that you are capable of growing into. Now, I started out talking about baking a cake and you can see that there's a lot of different ingredients that goes into the cake to make the perfect cake. There's a lot of ingredients that goes into our soul to make the perfect soul that is evolving through time and space. And it needs time to bake, so to speak, to experience, to be in that state of being, to grow into the next state of being to grow into the next state of being. Now I've talked to you a lot about the evolutionary process uh, today of consciousness, but in the process that you have been in, you have had many incarnations to bring you to the point that you are right now listening to me talk to you. You've had many incarnations to be here, be even interested in what I have to say. If you've stuck with me throughout this video, you are going to know that you probably are a very mature soul that has gone through many, many experiences and now wants the ultimate experience about going beyond the human form into the infinite form, the true identity, the truth of your whole beingness. So it's a process of illumination. It's putting light into your consciousness so that you can gather more awareness. And the more awareness you have, the more capable you are to work in the best interest of your soul. The evolutionary process teaches us that there is many steps, uh, if you will, we'll call them steps or some call it veils that have to be lifted. It's all the same thing. As one, as one veil is lifted, another one appears to be lifted. And then another one appears to be lifted. And it goes on and on till we finally move out through the final veil and we become totally illumined with the truth of our beingness in God, in the infinite. We are no longer limited to finite beingness. When we were created as the soul, we were very finite. We were very, very, very finite and very, very, very extremely limited. You know a piece of stone is very limited. It stays in a spot unless a human being picks it up and throws it somewhere. It's very very limited. It has very little awareness. But now you are a human being and you have a lot more awareness. And by having a lot more awareness, you are able to comprehend intelligently a lot more. 
So why am I going on and on about evolution of your soul? Because in order to understand your whole self and the very many, many aspects of yourself, you have to understand your whole soul. Now, I started out talking about baking a cake. And we understood there was a lot of different ingredients in that cake to make it what it is now. There's a lot of different ingredients in you to make it who you are right now. And each, each cake that we could do a sponge cake, we could do a chocolate cake, we could do a carrot cake. I can go on and on and on and on about all kinds of cakes that we could make by putting different ingredients in it. So you have your own special ingredients in your soul. And your time has come for you to look through the finite self into the infinite self and discover all the ingredients that made you up. You are a special soul. You are not like anybody else's soul. We are all different, but we all learn lessons and we all use those lessons for different purposes in development of our consciousness. So we are here right now learning to develop more consciousness, more awareness, more comprehension of our whole self. Because until you know your whole self, you're not going to know the truth of your whole being. Now, if we took that cake that we baked, and supposing that we didn't know anything about what was going on in the ingredients, but we had the cake, and you would say, oh, this is a delicious cake, Jane. How did you make it? And I would say to you, I made it by putting flour and sugar and, and uh, vanilla and shortening, blah, 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 blah. And this is what made up the cake. And you say, oh, can I do that too? Absolutely, you can too. But you're going to have to, you know, do some work. The cake isn't going to be automatic. You're going to have to go and sift the flour and measure the sugar and blah, 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 blah to make the cake. Well, your soul, with all of its ingredients, when you get to a certain place of your evolution, you look at your soul and you see what made up the soul, what made up the consciousnesses, what, how you got to where you are. Before you can take the bigger leap, to the infinite, because you would not understand the infinite unless you went through this process of being human. That's part of the experience of life, L-I-F-E, life. To live in the infinite. To live in the true identity, the super consciousness that you are. So, the next time you eat a piece of cake, a cupcake, whatever, know that that has many ingredients, just like your soul. It is made up of wonderful ingredients. But there's a time when we get to look at our soul, look at our many lifetimes, the process that we've gone through to become to who we are right now. At that moment in time and space, we are beginning to free ourselves from human beingness. We start to understand and unravel our many, many lifetimes that we've had. And we start to understand our whole self in God. This is the process. This is the true evolution of soul. This is what all the mystics talk about all the masters that have gone before us have talked about the evolution of consciousness. And we are conscious that we are in the evolution of consciousness. So this week, I'd like you to kind of meditate on your soul and the many ingredients that it has been made up of 
to make you who you are today. I look forward to seeing you next week, talking to you, and being a part of your life and the evolution of your soul. Bye-bye for now. Well, after that, I'm just going to ask you, are, are you feeling ready to lift the veils, to get to know your whole self in God, to realize that your soul is an infinite consciousness evolving through finite forms, and it's made up of many impressions or ingredients that have accumulated over time until you reach this point in evolution where you are ready to move into a new consciousness. Call it your higher self, call it your God consciousness, call it peanut butter. So let's take a moment to just move into a time of touching into that essence, that truth of our being. Close your eyes and just welcome the experience of your soul, your higher self, in God. Welcome your experience of your spiritual essence and nature. Oneness and support for your soul as we move into a moment of silence. And as we allow ourselves to come back to the seat where we're sitting, the feeling of the chair underneath us, and the awareness of the room around us, we carry into this week this awareness that we are that infinite consciousness, that soul that is moving through our experiences and into this leap in consciousness. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, we're going to talk about our cake baking consciousness, our process together on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And just talk about our different experiences that we've had and, and support each other on the journey. So please check the link in your chat box or go to the website and join us at 7 p.m. Eastern for our Thursday night question and answer session where you will get your questions answered and where you can support your soul and get support from others. Also, we have donations for the Center for Enlightenment available for you to um, click on your uh, in, in your chat room. You can uh, support the ongoingness of this service that the Center for Enlightenment is doing. And that also can be found on the website. Well, we're going to move into a week in which we're going to look at the different ingredients that make up our souls and uh, begin to ponder things from a, a different perspective, maybe have a little fun with it. So until Thursday night or next Sunday, bye for now. <laughs>